Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our webinar series. Uh, this is our uh, training for uh, 2021. Thank you for joining us. I uh, would like to introduce our team again. My name is Graham Hutchinson. I'm with Nelson Irrigation in Walla Walla. Mike Noftel, Independent Consultant, Washington State. Steve McCoon, Nelson Irrigation, Walla Walla in Washington State. Joe Vivier, the uh, Global Technical Support Person with Irrigate in New Zealand. And our man in Chile, Ignacio Del Campo with Nelson Irrigation in Chile. This is our uh, webinar schedule. Today we're going to talk about points of control, which is really how you configure uh, ERICAD to give you successful designs and also designs that um, are in line with what your thoughts are. So please use the question and answer feature in Zoom and our team will try and answer your questions. Para los asistentes de habla español, se puede hacer preguntas por el menú de preguntas y respuestas. Trataremos de contestarles en español. So configuring IRICAD uh, to give you the best, um, best outcome. I think the first thing to emphasize is to, to use your own design experience. Uh, when you design a system manually, the calculations take a lot of time. And so most people spend some time looking at the layout and determining what the best way to lay it out and subdivide it is before they actually do any calculations. And when people uh, step into a computer system for design, they tend to spend less time on that. But really it is worthwhile um, spending the time just analyzing something before you do any work and that will give you the best outcome. The other things that we're going to look at are irrigation layout, database parameters, the design parameters, and the zone design configuration table. So we'll switch into IRICAD and start looking at some examples. So here we have uh, an IRICAD screen and we have one zone with uh, one valve, but there are two sections to that zone. And this is a situation that is, uh, can be difficult to IRICAD. So uh, we have the valve and then we have a short distance of pipe to the first sprinklers. And the maximum pressure for sprinkler pressure is probably going to be in the top left-hand corner and the minimum sprinkler in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. And IRICAD is working with the variation over that whole, whole uh, set of sprinklers. So really what IRICAD is going to try and do is match the friction loss in this pipeline coming down here with the friction loss in this short segment going to the first row. And sometimes that can be difficult, particularly with elevation. So that's something to uh, consider when you're laying systems out. Is it going to be possible to get um, enough pressure down here without overpressurizing the sprinklers close to the valves? Let's look at another example. Here we have, um, a block with, with some eleva elevation, and as is done frequently, the lateral pipes are in line with the, uh, the contours, so they're fairly level across the, the contours, but there's quite a slope down the submain. And we can look at the three-dimensional model, and I'll exaggerate that a little bit, but the laterals are going across, and the submain is coming down the slope. So there's a lot of slope there. There are some tools in IRICAD to help you determine some of those things. We, I'll draw a line down here. And then a line across there, for example. If I select this line and go to elevation profile, we can see that that's the, uh, the profile down that line. So that's what we're dealing with uh, going down the submain. And then if I select this line and look at the 
elevation profile again. We can see that uh, we've got a little bit of a rise, then a gentle slope, and then down again. So the hydraulic solution for that is not going to be very difficult. But for coming down the slope in the submain, uh, it, it may be difficult to do. So one of the things to watch out for in the design parameters is your maximum velocity in, in the zone pipes. And if you have that set fairly low, Eurocad's not going to be able to burn off enough pressure coming down that slope. So you may need to set the velocity limit. When you're dealing with slope, it's a good idea to set the velocity limit quite high. You can always change it back. Uh, you can always see what's going on, but sometimes it's better to get a solution and then make changes rather to, than confine Eurocad too much and, and not get the solution at all. Uh, the other option naturally is to configure this block with pressure regulators going into each lateral, and then you could maintain slower velocities down the slope. Let's look at a, uh, a drip tape block. And here we have a drip plate tape block. And in this block, the um, this is the uh, drip tape being used. And the, the length of the run is about 600 feet. And this is in line with making sure it's possible. So you've got a block like this and you draw it out, but maybe it's not possible hydraulically to meet your criteria. So again, check to see that it is that your tape runs are okay. We do have a, uh, a new, new tool, tool in version 19 and it's called the tape run tape length calculator. And so it pulls up the database and we can select the tape that we want. And it, if you click on calculate, it will give you the maximum length to stay within the uh, parameters that you have set. In this case, 561 feet, which is shorter than your maximum length. So that's a quick way um, to analyze whether it's going to work or not. Another way is actually while you're setting up the prop, the uh, block parameters. And this, these are the tape block parameters. And that tool now uh, sits in the bottom right-hand corner. And so you maybe you want to check the existing length. and it's going to give you the minimum and maximum uh, pressures in there. This is a new version and I see that there, I've got a couple of things to fix on the units. That should actually be feet, not meters, that symbol. And these are actually pressures in meters, not feet, not PSI rather, so that 5.62 should actually be the eight PSI that we've got up here. And 3.68 is the uh, pressure at the end, and it's below our 5.6 in PSI that we want. But these are some of the tools that are avail available to you in checking those things. So there's, there are a few things along the lines of, of uh, just checking to make sure that things are possible when you when you lay out a design. We'll move on to the uh, database. And there are some things to check in the database. Uh, let's, I'll open up an image here and put an image on the screen. And this is a summary from my database. A Couple of things really important with your pipes. Make sure that you've got a range of pipe sizes flagged as available to use, both as laterals and the, in this case, unconnected zone pipes. And we've got one, two, three, four pipes available for zones and then quite a few more available for main lines. Uh, sometimes people say, I want to use only three quarter inch in this design. And so they won't flag any other pipe as being available. And sometimes they don't get solutions you're better off to have uh, a wider range of sizes available. And the change type tool is a very powerful tool in ERICAD. So maybe in a design, you'll end up with a few pieces of one inch. Um, 
you can look and see how significant that is. You can change them to three quarter very quickly using the change type tool, analyze it, and you'll see if you're in good shape or not. But it, it, it's a lot better to give Uricad a more choice than is really necessary. The other thing about the pipes is that the, that the pipe prices must be relative. The, particularly when you're doing uh, sizing by the linear program LP, cost is one of the factors that is used in, in the selection of pipe. So if your six inch pipe is cheaper than your four inch pipe in the database, Iricad's going to use a lot of six inch pipe and not very much four inch pipe. And so these um, prices are relative. They don't necessarily need to be exact. The closer they are to reality, the better it is, but they don't need to be exact, but they do need to be relative. And one of the things that we did when we created the database to send out, uh, at one point in time, uh, PVC pipe was about $1 uh, per pound. And so we used that, and we used the pound per 100 feet to set the price. And that made sure that everything is relative one size to the other. We'll show you in, a, in, a, in another webinar how you can update the prices uh, very quickly from your accounting software so you don't have to update prices manually in URICAD. But if that's not an option for you, the best uh, suggestion is perhaps to set the, um, the cost per, per weight per 100 feet. And if it turns out to be a dollar, it's a dollar. It turns out to be a dollar 50, use dollar 50 per per pound per 100 feet, and you'll end up with good relative prices. Some other important things uh, relating to the database is to make sure your allowable pressure variation is possible. So in designing a block of sprinklers or a block of drip tape, in the database, you set the allowable variation. And here, for example, uh, we have the Nelson R10 Turbo, and in the parameters for that sprinkler, the flow tolerance is plus or minus 5% of flow, which is approximately plus or minus 10% of pressure. Down in the bottom here, we have the list of nozzles, and I've opened up the number 65 nozzle. And we can see with this nozzle that the parameters for the nozzle are the minimum pressure should be 25 and the maximum pressure should be 50. And this, these minimums and maximums are different from the allowable variation. Some people might want to design a block of sprinklers at 40 PSI. Some people might want to design sprinklers, a block of the same sprinkler at 30 PSI. Both of those pressures are within the range of that nozzle. Below that pressure, perhaps the sprinkler will not function correctly. Above that pressure, uh, there might be too much misting. So that's more of the physical range of the sprinkler. When you go into the block parameters and you set the pressure, and let's, I'll see if I can uh, move this uh, down just a little bit. And turn on my irrigation areas so I can look at this block that I created. Here we have a pressure that I put in the block of 35 psi. Now that gives me a range, an allowable range using this plus or minus 10% of pressure of 31.5 to 38.5. So that's going to be possible. Both of those numbers are within the 25 and 50 PSI range. But if I set this block to run at 25 PSI, it's not going to work too well because that's right at the bottom of our minimum. So URICAD will know it can't go below that. It will go 10% above that, but it won't go 10% below. So allowable variation becomes 25 PSI to 28.5 PSI, and it's going to be difficult to get a solution. So one thing to, to keep in mind is to um, make sure that you set a pressure 
in the block parameters where your plus or minus have some room within this nozzle range. And the same, same applies to uh, drip tape. The other thing to keep in mind uh, is not to set the valve pressure, and I'll talk about that in, 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 in a little while. So they are the main things from the database. Uh, we'll go into some of the design parameters. And here we have hydraulic parameters, economic parameters, and analysis parameters. And there's, there are some things to, uh, to check in, in each of these um, uh, menus. Firstly, design uh, your velocities. Uh, and here I have six feet for zone pipe and five feet for, for mainline pipe. With a lot of my designs, I might actually use higher limits. I really do want to keep my mainline pipe uh, at five feet, feet per second or below, but I may design with six in the um, mainline and seven in, in the zone. And then if I get a mainline pipe that has a velocity of 5.1, I can make the judgment call whether that's okay or not. But if I set that to five, it won't give me that pipe at 5.1, it will give me a larger pipe um, and the velocity might be 2.5. So I want to make the judgment call on what's okay or not. So I tend to set my limits a little bit higher than, than really what I want in the end design. The pipe rationalization we'll come back to. Uh, well, actually we can, we can open that up right now and look at that. So here we have a, uh, a drip tape design. And one thing that Eric had, uh, can do, because it's a mathematical uh, calculator really, is that it can do things that make sense mathematically and economically, uh, but don't, don't make sense from a uh, practical or an installation point of view. And so here we have uh, some six inch pipe coming down. We're branching over into three inch pipe. Here we have a little piece of four inch pipe, and then we go back into six inch pipe. And that really doesn't make sense. Uh, economically, it might do. Uh, maybe Eric has decided that because this is a, uh, a short length and we can withstand a little bit higher friction loss per 100 feet, which is going to be not very much friction loss in that length, um, it's put some smaller pipe. And then this is longer, and so economically, it makes sense to go back up to, four, to six inch. In our uh, hydraulic parameters, there are some options for rationalizing pipe diameters. And I have both zone and mainline checked. And, and so really the design process is the same, but this um, puts one other step uh, after the design process that you don't really see. And it looks to see if anything like this goes on. And if it does, it resolves it. So now I've checked that if I run the uh, design LP again. Whoops. That is computer size. Did I uncheck it? Well, I didn't know why that worked. It worked uh, half an hour ago in, in my test, but uh, what it should have done is um, size that back to, to six inch and this one to four inch. I think I might've done it once or twice too often. And so it's got a bit confused, but that is what uh, the rationalizing mainline pipes will do. Let's go back into the parameters again. And this time we'll look at the economic parameters. So these are things that will affect uh, pipe sizing because lim uh, the linear program uh, does take into account the economic uh, considerations. Firstly, uh, 
the higher your energy cost in kilowatt hours and the lower your pump efficiency, the, the IRICAD is going to um, swing towards larger diameter pipe because um, a smaller diameter pipe with higher friction loss is going to cost so much more. So higher efficiency and lower energy will uh, swing IRICAD towards smaller pipe and lower, lower efficiency and higher energy will sw swing IRICAD towards um, larger diameter pipe. The operating hours uh, is quite significant. Um, uh, several versions ago, there were not uh, two different um, settings for operating hours. And we typically might have had this set for 1,000 or 2,000 hours. And sometimes our zone pipe sizes were too big. If you're finding that when you design a zone, IRICAD is not using the whole range available, uh, you want to design to plus or minus 10% of pressure and it's giving you plus or minus 10 a lot of the time, reduce this zone operating hours here and it will swing towards um, smaller diameter pipe and give you um, a higher pressure variation within those zones. The economic term, uh, also has an effect on the uh, on the calculations. Uh, the shorter the term, the more significant energy costs are, so larger pipe sizes. In the analysis factors, um, the defaults should be uh, about 5,000 for the iterations. IRICAD comes out with lower limits, but it's best to uh, put the higher limits in there and then you don't run against the limits. When computers were a lot slower, they did allow these limits to be in place, but now the numbers fly by fairly quickly. So 5,000 is the maximum for both things. Uh, this one here is not really related to points of control, but it is a useful one to know. Um, this is the duration of the error messages that pop up. If you've got uh, 90 zones and you're getting an error message for even a quarter of them, um, what this is is two and a half thousand milliseconds. So those messages will stay on the screen for two and a half uh, thousand milliseconds. If you want them to stay on the screen for just 1,000, you can do that and click on Save as Default. So one last thing, um, let's go back into uh, block two. And we'll look at the, uh, irrigation areas again. And we'll see that this block was set to 35 PSI. One other thing in the zone configuration file that we'll look at is sometimes even while you're designing LP, some people will fix the valve pressure. Let's say I put in 40 PSI. Uh, what you're asking Eurocad to do there is to burn up a lot of pressure between the valve and the first sprinkler. And that may not be possible. Uh, I think uh, our maximum pressure was supposed to be uh, 38 PSI. So sometimes uh, when you put a, um, a high pr pressure than normal at the valve and you've got some elevation there, IRICAD can't, cannot burn off the pressure and you'll get a message that the linear program can't give you a solution. Typically, I like to leave the downstream valve pressure at zero while I'm uh, asking IRICAD to give me pipe sizes. And zero means that the valve pressure can float. And IRICAD will come up with a valve pressure that gives you a solution. Then you can put in um, a pressure to uh, make things a little bit more sensible, analyze it and see the result. But uh, it's best to leave that as zero rather than fix the valve pressure because often IRICAD cannot um, create enough fr friction loss between the valve and that first sprinkler. 
The other thing that's an option is the number of sub sub main sizes. And some people don't want IRICAD to telescope in too many sizes, so they might put three. Well, in this design, which has a lot of uh, elevation down, it may need to telescope in more sizes. And so if you limit it to the number of sizes that it can telescope, then you may not get a solution. Again, um, I tend to leave that as zero and let IRICAD come up with the sizes. If it comes ends up with some sizes that are too small, that, that I think are too small, I, I can change those back and analyze it and see if that affects my pressures uh, uh, significantly. So there are a couple of things in the zone um, design configuration file. So we've touched on some things in design layout. Use your experience. Uh, before you actually start drawing things out. Make sure run lengths are possible. We talked about some things in the database. Make sure that you've got um, sufficient pipes flagged available and the prices are relative to each other. And we've talked about some hydraulic parameters that um, allow you to put in some settings that get the things that you want. So this has been a, a relatively uh, short webinar, but uh, I think we've covered most of the major points that go into the points of control. So we've got a little bit of time. Are there any questions outstanding out there? Hutch, there was, uh, and I'll perhaps turn my video on as well. There was a question um, about uh, there's actually a couple of questions in regard to the formulas used in LP design. Uh, which ones are used and uh, maybe what's involved in the process uh, and, and why would those formulas be used as opposed to other formulas that are available? Okay. So um, for zone pipes and mainline pipes, uh, the Hazen Williams is the uh, the calculation method used for the hydraulic calculations on those pipes. The the options uh, for that are listed here are uh, for uh, tape design, and you have the option of Darcy Wise back or Diskin. And if you use Darcy Wise back. Um, one of the things that it takes into account is the viscosity of the water. And the viscosity is affected uh, quite significantly by temperature. And so uh, that if you're in a uh, extremely um, hot climate and uh, the irrigation system is always going to be used at quite high temperature and your water uh, coming into the pipes is at a temperature that is um, fairly warm anyway, if, you, if the reservoir is a pond, uh, you could choose a viscosity that matches that temperature. Likewise, if you're uh, at um, 12,000 feet in elevation and altitude and you're designing a drip system for leaching on a mining site and the temperatures are, uh, you know, 35 degrees Fahrenheit or two degrees Celsius most of the time, it would be better to change that viscosity according to the temperature because it really will uh, affect the, the hydraulic results that you get. So I think that's the main one there uh, for zones and main lines. Uh, Iricad uses uh, Hazen Williams. For drip tape, you've got the option of Darcy Weisbach and Diskin. And it really depends on the temperature that um, the ambient temperature and the water temperature, whether uh, you play around with this viscosity or not. I had muted myself because my phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of uh, maybe a simpler, error, um, I think that the reason that that pipe didn't resize in the example you're doing was that you had clicked a mainline pipe and then went back and did LP sizing for zone pipes instead of LP sizing for mainline. I think that would be why that didn't work um, in that earlier example. 
Okay, you saved me there, Tim. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Steve. So let me run. Um, so we, we check the design parameters and hydraulic parameters, and I have rationalized pipe sizes. So this time, if I go to mainline design and LP, voila. So okay. thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for questions. Right? Okay. Well, thank you for joining in. Uh, our next webinar is going to be on, let me uh, share my, stop sharing this screen and share another screen. So our next uh, webinar is on databases, and Steve McCoon is going to run that web webinar for us. It will be this Thursday, January the 21st at 8 a 11 a.m. Pacific Time USA. So we hope to see you all there. Thank you.